Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I just wanted to quickly guide you through how you can set up the multiplayer enabled or TCP IP access enabled version of D2R and also uh, our multiplayer compatible version of Remodded that goes along with it. Um, now, uh, obviously you guys are only seeing this video right now if you guys are Patreon subscribers and uh, I wanted to give you guys early access for a few reasons. Uh, one, I greatly appreciate all your guys' support, patience, and assistance over time. Uh, you guys are what really makes the community kick and I uh, can't appreciate you guys enough for it. Number two, um, I think you guys are going to be great testers. You guys seem very vocal and passionate about D2R and so I wanted you guys to be the first to experience it. And and number three, uh, you guys are simply rock stars, so thanks for keep rocking, um, and I hope you guys will continue to enjoy the mod, the game, and its future progress. With all that out of the way, let's roll right into what you guys came here for, how to get set up, and how to play with your buddies and people online. And let's uh, jump into that by first, uh, recommend that you hop into our Discord channel, into that Patreon section, and check out the Multiplayer Files section. Um, that's going to be where you can get access to the zip file, and you'll see it named there, D2R Patreon Dev Release .zip. Um, So go ahead and grab that from there. And again, once inside, you're going to see a single folder. Um, and just like you did with D2R Launch or something, you're going to drag this folder to your desktop or somewhere else that's convenient for you. Just try to avoid uh, like your base C drive or something like that where uh, Windows might have an issue with that. Um, once you've done that, um, you're going to see a folder like that. So let me just go ahead and minimize that as we don't need to worry about it. And again, I've kind of fast forwarded here, but you can see here that folder's on my desktop now um, and you can see all the contents inside there. Um, so even if you've watched this video, I recommend uh, just taking a quick look over that readme. If you get stuck or for some optional steps, uh, you'll want to just take a quick look at that. Um, but getting on to the actual setup process, it's going to be real simple for you guys. All you're going to need to do is just run d2r.exe. So we're going to go ahead and get that started. Now, when you first run it, it may take, you know, 15, 30 seconds before you really see anything happen. Uh, don't stress. That's actually completely normal. Um, it's basically communicating um, everything and setting up all the files it needs to go ahead and begin the download. And what it's downloading is going to be the entire game. So you obviously notice that the zip was fairly small, um, but you do need the actual game um, files in order to uh, properly experience this build. Um, and so that's what it's uh, taking care of now for you with that pop-up that just appeared. Um, as a quick note for this download, it is downloading the files from Blizzard. So if you've acquired your uh, copy of the game through unofficial means, uh, this may not work for you, and I would recommend recommend uh, acquiring the games through official means instead. Um, but as you can see, it's just going through and it's going to download all those game files for us. Um, and again, a note with these, because it's all the game files, we're looking at about 27 gigabytes or so of a download. Um, so obviously, depending on your internet speed, this can take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to, you know, a couple hours. So just be mindful of that. Um, I will say, though, uh, that it does have kind of like a resume capability. Um, so if your power cuts out halfway through or, you know, you uh, have to go to work or something, you can't finish the download for whatever reason, something along those lines, it will pick up where you left off the next time you start it. Um, so, you know, I have 146,000 files, uh, and if it quits 60% way through, you know, you'll have 50,000 files the next time it, it boots up or whatever. Um, so anyways, uh, I won't bore you through actually extracting all that. I'm going to go ahead and kill the process. We're going to do some movie magic once more and hop over to the completed folder where that's been done already. And in the completed folder, you're going to notice um, basically only one change. You now have a data folder, and inside this data folder, you'll see all the 27 gigabytes of kind of game files that were uh, downloaded for you. Um, now you have everything that you need in order to play the game. I'm going to assume that you've already taken... Uh, care of any optional steps you might have wanted, uh, such as copying over that shared stash file to unlock all the tabs, um, and we're going to jump right into kind of getting started uh, with the setup. Um, so for that, we're not going to be using the launcher for this particular build. Um, we're going to try to keep it separate from D2R launch as development goes, and we'll try to incorporate that as time goes on. Um, so for this, it's just going to be slightly different than what you might be used to. We are going to uh, select d2r.exe, and we're going to right-click that and select the Create a Shortcut option. 
from there we can select the shortcut we're going to right click that and go to the properties option um, in here you're going to see a target box that should already be highlighted for you we're going to go to the very end of that box after the last quotation mark and we're going to add the following text into the field space dash mod space rmd space dash enable respec um, and what this will do is not only start the mod for you but it will also enable the infinite respec option that you can access in the skill tree uh, in uh, the panel in game um, so again that's just dash mod space rmd space dash enable respec um, we're going to enter that in at the very end click apply hit ok and now your shortcuts all set up in order to uh, play the mod um, but before we officially jump in i do want to switch paces uh, just to help explain tcp a little bit how you can set it up easily since obviously uh, that's the the whole goal of this build is, is to let you play with your friends so with that what i would personally recommend doing um, is heading over to radmin-vpn.com again links to all this will be in the video description below um, and you guys are not required to use this you guys can use whatever tool you'd like or no tools at all do your own port forwarding etc um, this is just what i'd recommend if you're kind of not tech savvy and just kind of want the the easy route to, to join anybody online um, so uh, with that out of the way we're just going to hit that download button we're going to let it download now i have already done that and kind of cheated it a little bit so we're going to go ahead and just run that download here and we're going to let it install um, one thing you'll notice through this install process, there's no account registration or anything like that. Um, so you don't have to worry about more email bloats or anything like that. Um, with it open, it's going to look very similar to this, although uh, I've cheated a little bit since I've used this before. You're going to see my name and stuff is already input. Uh, I'm already connected, things like that. So I'm going to uncheat and uh, pretend that it's like you guys will see it. And I'm going to leave the network. I'm going to go offline and you guys will see something like this when you first boot it up. Um, so it's very simple. Um, you can just simply click the red button to go online. If you're not in a network yet, it'll give you some options to do that. Um, but real quick, let's just explain. This is a virtual IP address that the program is giving you. And this is what you'll offer to your friends or people in Discord chat, etc. Um, if you want them to connect to your game. If you're just trying to connect to, uh, you know, maybe your buddy's game or somebody in chats, you can hit the join network option instead. And you can also access that option up here at the top at the network tab. Uh, but we're going to click join network. I'm going to show you two ways you can do it. If there's a private network that you'd like to join, again, maybe you have a real life buddy that's hosting one for you. Um, and you guys, you know, are different parts of the world. So this makes it nice and easy for you. You can do that. You can enter in the name and password he gave you and connect directly to his lobby. Um, and, you know, not sharing that information with any strangers. Uh, you can also choose the gaming network option. And uh, I thought this was pretty cool, but we requested um, that uh, they add a new channel for us. Um, and so if you search in Diablo, um, you will actually see uh, our channel for Resurrected that was just added like literally yesterday. Um, so this is brand new and they did it uh, just for us by request. Um, so I hope you guys can just take a moment to enjoy that. Uh, but anyways, just simply go ahead and select the Diablo 2 Resurrected option. Click join and you're going to join that lobby um, again along with everybody else who's interested in playing uh you know d2r uh over tcp so as you might see there's one other person currently in this channel he was nice enough to join for this demo video um, so we're going to go ahead and use him as our example scapegoat and if this was a friend or someone in chat that we're trying to connect with we can simply right click their name select the copy ip address option and that is what we're going to paste in the game when we're ready to connect um, speaking of game, we're going to hop into that in just a minute, uh, but let me show you one last thing um, before we, we jump in. So again, you can create your own network, so if you'd like to host your own lobby and again share it with buddies or maybe specific people in chat, you can obviously do, th do that. Sorry. Um, go ahead and give it a network name and a password. Um, and you can also join our mod sponsor ones, which will always be available in the private network section. If you enter RMD-1 with the password of TCP, all capitals, 
you can also join our mod sponsored network um, that will be running alongside the deep d2r public network in the gaming section um, so anyways that's a uh, how to use it it's pretty uh, straightforward and self-explanatory um, so we're gonna just roll right into the actual game now now that you know how to connect to other people so with that said let's go ahead and run our mod here and uh, one thing you might notice is that this is gonna look and function uh, if you've played remodded before at least largely like it has before um, there are some downgrades due to the uh, client um, that we had to make, uh, but largely it's going to be what you're used to, just with your buddies now also. Um, so you can check out the mod info section to learn a little bit more about the specific changes that come with this. Um, but what a lot of you will care about is this new shiny button here that says TCP IP. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And we've got two options, pretty self-explanatory here. You can either host a game for others to join, or you can join one somebody's already created. I'm going to do both, just to show you how this works uh, in this example. So let's go ahead and hope, host a game. And again, this is my IP address, uh, the virtual one that that program gave me. And that's what I'm going to share with my buddies. But I don't have any buddies because I'm a developer. So what I'm going to do is mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and run another copy of the game. And I am going to connect to myself. Um, and that way you guys can see how TCP works and both sides of the coin. Um, and just understand it's a pretty simple uh, host-client relationship. So again, I already have one copy up. And you can see here, if I tab, uh, you can see my IP address displayed in the top right. That's how we know that we're hosting the IC TCP game correctly. And if I swap back over to the other game, there we go. I don't know why it was uh, being picky there. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and join that same game. So let's go ahead and pick uh, Necro this time. I'm going to go ahead and click TCP. We're going to join. And it's going to autofill in the last IP you used. And for me, uh, that happens to be my own IP. Um, so we're going to just let that uh, stand and go ahead and click join. And once it loads up here, it should be almost done. Then you can see, here's the uh, Paladin I obviously entered in on. Let's go ahead and ask him to trade. And, whoops, wrong one there. We're going to click OK. And let's give him this sword I found earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that over to him. We're going to accept that trade. And there we go. So I got that sword, and that just should help prove... Uh, how the TCP is working and functioning um, so you guys can kind of play with your friends and as you can see we're already partied up and ready to kill some demons um, so I hope this has been a great introduction on how you can get set up um, and I hope you guys really enjoy all the work that's been into this it's been a long time coming so thanks once more for your patience and support have a great day bye